Okay, in this video, we're going to briefly discuss uh, the concept of ethnocentrism. Excuse me, I just need to get out of here real quick. Um, <clears throat> the idea that um, we can take a look at different societies in different ways, right? Um, that we're not the only society on the face of the planet, that we often have to uh, look at other societies. Ethnocentrism, as it's defined, ethno culture and central centrism being toward the middle of uh, is this just a natural cultural bias that the way we do things is uh, the most natural the best you know we all feel this way and once again in sociology we sometimes ask you know is it better to be ethnocentrism ethnocentric or more culturally relative uh, this idea of looking at other cultures on their face value and the answer is neither one is good nor bad Right? Ethnocentrism by itself um, has positive qualities to it. Sometimes we call it things like pride, national pride, cultural pride. Um, you know, patriotism uh, is rooted in the idea of ethnocentrism, this idea of, you know, we're the greatest nation on earth. We're the best culture. We, you know, if you have cultural pride, you know, and you, I, I'm proud to be blank, you know, that's ethnocentrism. It's that idea of I like who I am. I like my culture. I like you know, our customs and beliefs and music and food, right? So, again, it's a bias um, toward our own culture by itself, neither good nor bad. It does, however, limit our ability to understand other cultures, right? That idea of being culturally relative, which is nearly impossible to accomplish anyway. There's always going to be some things about other cultures that we find distasteful, unacceptable, quote-unquote weird, right? That idea of, you know... Um, that you know, just doesn't feel right, right? Even people who immerse themselves in other cultures will sometimes, you know, if they're being honest, need to admit, okay, I still kind of prefer the way things are done in my culture, or I still, you know, uh, find myself, you know, thinking or talking in my own language just as a way of, you know, uh, feeling more comfortable. You know, I just, I, I you know, eat the food that's here, but I kind of prefer pizza, you know, whatever it is, right? So <clears throat> the difference between ethnocentrism uh, uh, and cultural relativism is just a matter of degrees of comfortability. So we often say, okay, well, do we as sociologists need to take on, especially when it comes to social problems, more of a global perspective? Do we need to be looking at these things across the board? And to do that, we often think, okay, we need to engage in cross-cultural comparison, right? Are some of the ways that we may need to deal with some of the social problems in our societies by looking at how other societies do things, right? So if we look around the world and we say, wow, there's another country around the world that's experiencing an extremely low crime rate, should we be looking at what that society is doing to try to maybe come up with some solutions for our own society, lowering our own crime rate? Um, <clears throat> again, so, you know, it just looks on paper, like, oh yeah, of course we should be doing that. Um, what, and again, we run into obstacles. You know, what if that other society's culture is so different than ours that, you know, their solutions to certain problems would run up in the face of the way, quote, unquote, we do things or the way we feel comfortable doing things. It's not uh, always easy to just kind of, you know, on paper compare one culture to another and determine, quote, unquote, right or wrong. Uh, so we could say, okay, if another country's crime rate is extremely low because they execute uh, thieves, you know, what we then say, okay, we should be doing that here too. You know, in light of our set of values and our constitution and our you know, uh, history of laws, we would say, no, that's that, that uh, the response to that crime is far outweighs, you know, we call cruel and unusual punishment. We'd say it's, you know, it's not compensatory or measurable to the effect of the crime. So we would not do that in our society. And, you know, the fact that that other country you know, has a very low crime rate because of what we would probably consider to be, you know, uh, an overreaction uh, to that. So <clears throat> the advantages to cross-cultural comparisons are that there are many things affecting the entire world that we sometimes need to work in conjunction with other societies regarding. So clearly, uh, you know, in today's environment of global warming and climate change, we're seeing uh, many, many, many more refugees around the world, right? We're seeing many, many, many more people who are needing to migrate from one area to another 
um, how is how are these different societies going to deal with that? You know, it's, it's going to be nearly impossible on a global scale for one country to just say we're not accepting anybody any more people into our society <coughs> uh, when there are that many people who need to move. Um, so we can definitely say things like exploitation of workers, you know, uh, what we sometimes generally refer to as human rights are, are things that we often, you know, what's quote unquote good in America is not necessarily the way another society do, does things. Um, we're looking right now at, you know, some of the conditions going on in Europe, you know, the invasion of, of countries across other countries' borders, <clears throat> you know, like I said, these mass waves of migration, refugees, um, you know, these are all issues which have to be dealt with on a global scale. So into this comes, again, we're talking about our own society, this kind of concept of corporate America. Um, that, again, as I mentioned in our last video, you know, America is very much founded on a very individualistic, it's one of our core values. We often re refer specifically to concepts regarding free will. Um, and we're also a very capitalistic society. We'll discuss this in more detail in a future module. Um, but capitalism is also very much built <coughs> kind of on this concept of freedom in the markets, freedoms of behavior, uh, freedom of competition. Um, and so when we kind of talk about this, this idea of corporate America, we're talking about this concept of, you know, okay, how does uh, America and the spirit of capitalism, um, you know, kind of override a lot of the, 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 um, the ways that we determine solutions to social problems. Um, and we definitely know that, uh, again, this is another trend uh, that uh, American style of capitalism has rapidly spread around the world. So again, we're back to this kind of idea of it's, you know, our ethnocentrism to believe that this is you know, the best kind of system. But the fact is that the, the, the America is the uh, largest global economy at this time um, and <clears throat> represents, you know, uh, many, 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 many different types of, of ideas and perspectives uh, that this type of American capitalism is spread around the world um, and influences a lot of the ways that societies not only deal with us but also uh, with social problems in their own societies.